Hello and welcome to Database Management Systems. I'm Julita Christie and in this video I'm going to explain structured query language, its uh, introduction and what types of databases are available to install, then how to install Oracle SQL Plus and the data types involved in SQL and the data definition language. So let's get started. Some of the open source, open source uh, databases are free databases that are available to you without any cost. So these are very gr uh, great for practicing. So you can have MySQL and Oracle SQL Plus, both are by Oracle, so you can use either of those. And in my lecture series, I'm going to use Oracle SQL Plus, so I'm going to show installation of that. The commercial databases available are DB2 and SQL Server. There are many other open source and commercial databases available. These are just some examples. So these are DB2 is by IBM and SQL Server is by Microsoft. And you can use those, but you'd have to pay in order to use these two databases. Now, how to install Oracle SQL Plus, which I will be using throughout all the videos on SQL Plus. I'm going to show you that. First of all, we'll begin by, uh, you have to begin by clicking uh, on the link that is given in the description box. And when you click it, this is what will open. So there you have to go ahead and click, first of all, on the type of system. So for example, if you are using uh, Windows, then you, you click on the second link. If you're using Linux, you click on the first link. So depending on your system, you're going to click. And once you've done that, then it will ask you to create an account or sign in. If you don't have an account, you can create one. And all these are the details that you'll be asked to fill in. And they are not much actually, so you can go ahead and fill those and create an account. And as soon as you do this, there will be a download starting. This download is about uh, 1.9 GB. So that is the downloaded file. Once that file is downloaded, it will be a zip folder. So you can extract the files from that zip folder. And when you do that, these are the files that will be available to you. So this is the folder uh, Oracle XE184. And if you extract it, you will get these many files. From these files, select the setup.exe. And from setup.exe, you can see that these are the steps you need to follow. Click on next and it will ask you accept the terms. So do that and then click on next again. And this is the path. So now this is where you enter your password. Remember this password because you'll be using it later. So create a password that you feel you're going to remember. And remember that you will be using this password. So please uh, don't forget it. And uh, finally, you can click on install and it will install it. And this might take some time. And once it's ready, you're all ready to use this software. Now, let's go ahead and see SQL data types. So these are the data types, are the main data types, but there are several data types available. We are not going to look into all of those data types, but these are some of those. So you can see that there is a data type called number or numeric, and it's also sometimes written as integer. They are all the same. After writing this, we always specify two things. One is the size of that number, size in the sense how many digits you're allowing. So if you say 10 digits, then this number contains 10 digits. And the D that stands here, that, that is for um, the decimal point. So if you say 10 digits, but out of those 10 digits, you want two digits to be after the decimal point, then you will mention two instead of D here. Then you have C-H-A-R, that is car, and this is character data type. 
So you have um, N written over here. So again, you have to specify the number of characters you want. And you have also the variable character data type. So here also you can specify number of characters. Both are used for characters. The difference is in character, if you specify the size, then you would be sure that you would be using that many characters. So for example, if you had to store somebody's ID that contained uh, numbers as well as alphabets, then you would use this and you would know for sure that you would be using 10 characters. Then you're going to use this particular data type. Otherwise, we go to variable character. For example, if you want to store a name or an address where you don't know how many characters exactly will be required, then we use variable character. And then there's also a data type in order to store date. So these are the four main data types. There are a lot, a lot more data types in SQL, but I'm not going to cover all those in this video. Okay. Now we move on to the data definition language. Data definition language is used to create the design. Now I'm going to show you some demonstration about how to use this um, SQL plus software. So we will learn the data definition language right there. So you can go and first of all, go to search and search for SQL plus and you can start it and this black command line will open. You can right click on top for properties and change the font and layout and colors and whatever you like. If it gives an error, that's all right. Now, after that, it will ask for the username and password. The username is system and the password is whatever you entered while installing. You can use the clear screen function in order to clear your screen of whatever else you have done before. Now let's see the create table query. So the create table query looks like this. You're going to write down create table and then you will specify the name of the table that is employee and after that you will write down the column name and the data type. So my column's name is ID and number in bracket three means the ID is going to be of data type number and the size is going to be three. So that's what it means. Next, we have a name with variable character 10 and you put a comma and write down the next one that is city. And once you're done, Storing all of that, close the bracket and do semicolon. Whenever you do semicolon, your SQL query will run. Otherwise, if you just press enter, then that means your SQL query is just going to go to the next line. It's not going to run there. Okay, so when you, when you do semicolon, that means your SQL query is running. Now let's insert some data into this table. So one way to do that is to use the insert into query. By writing in it in this manner, you, you'll write insert into employees values and enter the ID and the name of a person. Remember to use single quotes if it is a character and then semicolon. So it says one row created. And now you can see if you do DESC name of the table, then it will give you the description of the table, the schema of it, what are the columns and what are their data types. And if you do select star from employee, it gives you the data inside that table. Now let's insert some more data by using another form of insert query. So. I'm using insert into employee. And at this point, I'm only passing two columns, ID and name, and then I'm passing their values. So I'm writing two comma Mary, and it says one row created. And now let's look at the data inserted. So it is going to look like this. This is the inserted data. 
where city is not there. So this is called a null value. Another way to insert is write the query in this manner, insert into employee bracket, ID, name, city, all the columns, press enter and write down values and use ampersand in front of each column. So this is how it looks. And when you do this, then it will ask you for the values. So it will ask you for the ID. It will ask you for the name and you can type any name you want. And it will ask you for the city. Remember that always characters are written or strings are written with single quotes. So it says one row created. Now to insert another row, just use forward slash. So it will just run your previous query again. You don't have to write it multiple times. Then we go ahead and insert yet another row by mentioning everything inside that we want. And then we can look at whatever we have inserted by typing select star from employee. This is the query to see the data that we have inserted. And you can use up arrow key in order to get the data previously, the query that you wrote previously. So this is how the SQL console works. If you want to get your previous query, you can just do that. And you can select the data and you can copy paste also. It won't look very nice, but you can do copy paste by right clicking on the top bar. So. Don't use control C and control V, but you can do the right click on the top bar and do edit, copy, edit, paste. This is what it looks like. So let me just quickly now clear the screen. Next, we are going to see how to select certain columns. So you can write down select ID comma name from employee. It will give you only those two columns. So that's how the select query works. If you write select star, it selects everything. And if you do only names of the columns, then only those columns will be selected. Now I'll show you another way of creating the table. For example, if you wanted to create table with IT employees, but only with ID and name, then you can write your query in this manner. You can write down create table employee underscore IT as select ID comma name from employee. So this will select only the ID and name columns from employee. And you don't have to mention their data type or anything because it will take the data type of employee table and create a new table called employee IT. And let's see what that looks like. So we can describe it by DESC command these are the columns and their data types. And you can also do select star from employee underscore IT. This will give you the data inside of it. So you can create one table from another table by using the create table as select query. Now remember that while creating tables, you cannot use space in the name of the table. So if you want a space or something, you, you have to use underscore. So that's why I'm using underscore over here, okay? Now let's see how we can modify the table after we have created it. So let's say that I want to add a column into my table once I have already created it. Then I'm going to use the alter table query so alter table, name of the table, and then you write down add, and let's say I want to add a salary column, then I will write salary and the size of it, data type and size. And now you can see I'm describing employee and there's an extra column there. The only problem is now when you do select star from employee, there will be this extra column visible, but it will be all empty. So there is nothing in that column. You can see that it's empty. And when you start inserting again, it's going to start inserting from the fifth row. It's not going to start inserting from the first row. So don't think that you can just do 
insert into employee and then start inserting the salaries of everybody. It's not as simple as that. That is why in SQL, we always advise you that you create your schema or design so, so well that you don't have to change it afterwards because it creates lots of problems. Okay, now having done this, let's move on to the rest of the DDL queries. So another data definition query is when you want to change the data type. So let's say my data type of name is right now having 10 characters, but I want to change and make it 20 because it's not enough. So you can do alter table employee modify, write down the name of the column and the data type, new data type that you want and it says table altered. And then when you check it, you can see that the data type is now variable character to 20. So that's what it looks like. Now I have a table called employee IT, which I created a, a little while ago. If I want to remove it, I can do drop table employee IT. Then what that does is removes that table. And now if I try to access it, it says table or ob object does, it does not exist. Now, just like that, we have um, another query if you want to rename a particular table. So let's say that I have the employee table, which looks like this. And first I want to rename it. So in order to rename the table, you have to use the rename query where you will write down rename and you'll write down the name of the table. And then you'll write the keyword to and write the new name. That is, I'm writing new employee. So when it says table renamed, now you can describe it and try the old name. It will say that it does not exist. But when you try with the new name, then you get your data. So that means the table is successfully renamed. And now for the last data definition language query, it is called truncate, which is what we're going to see now. You can see that there is data in the table right now. But when I do truncate employee, sorry, it's going to be the new name, not the old name. So truncate table, write down the name, new underscore employee. And you can see that it is truncated. And now when I do select star from new employee, there is no data in it. But it's uh, columns and schema, that means it's data type and everything is preserved, which you can see by running the DESC command. So that's all for data definition language and for this video. And I would suggest that you try implementing all this side by side, running the same thing on your laptop and uh, pausing the video whenever you find that you haven't yet run the query. So you have to pause the video and run it. You cannot um, uh, expect the video to go slow. You can just pause it whenever you like and run the query and then start it all over again. So that's how you can learn to perform all these practicals given in this video and the next videos to come. So thank you for watching. See you in the next video.